Okay. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon sa ating viewers. Uh, we are from the RMC School of Law. And, and this topic is all about public international law. I am Fernando Cruz III. And my partner is Mr. Jo Neil John Valiar. Good, good day, sir. Good day to you, sir. So, what are we discussing today? No, we will we will be discussing the case of Factory of Chorzo. Okay. Uh, claim for indemnity. Are you familiar with this, sir? Uh, I'm not really that familiar with the place, but with Germany and Poland, uh, you familiar with the uh, World War One and World War Two. Uh, okay, that's good. That's good, sir. So, as uh, in the in the map. Germany is situated adjacent to Poland uh, by only a territorial line uh, dividing them. So in this time, no, uh, World War I, there has been disputes all around the world. And one of these uh, resulted to Germany and Poland's ano, uh, misunderstanding regarding certain issues. Yes, so, sir. So, so for the background... See, okay. Okay, sir. Uh, for the background of the case, sir, this case is about the violation of international agreement wherein whether Poland can be made liable for violations of Section 6 of the Geneva Convention. The aftermath of First World War led to the bipartite agreement between Germany and Poland regarding the transfer of Upper Silesia area to Poland in which states that Poland would not forfeit any property of Germany. So this is the original agreement between the two. Yes, mm -hmm. so it was actually after World War, uh, we can recall that uh, Germany lost the World War One. So... This is their consequence. Okay, sir? Ah, okay, sir. Uh, are you alive that time, sir? In World <laughs> War? <laughs> Certainly not, but uh, uh, my grandfather was fond of history. So, I no, used to right. hear a lot of stories from uh, this part of our history. Uh, very interesting, sir. So, why, why did the... Uh, what did... The indemnity is all about. Indemnity is a contractual obligation of one party, the indemnifier, to compensate the loss incurred to the other party or to the acts of the independent or any other party. No? Indemnity in a smaller sense uh, is very easy to understand. But how about if it involves different countries, different jurisdictions? So yes, in terms sir. na... No, we Germany. If you are Germany, you will not be. You will have a hard time when negotiating with Poland, another country, uh, re with regards to this obligation. Do you agree, sir? Yes, sir. I certainly agree, and that is why this case is uh, commonly tackled in uh, public international law subjects. Because of oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. involvement between states, so we continue. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's correct, sir. No, uh, because before the World War One, there there has been no ano uh, uh, obligations between uh, states only on municipal law. No, the realm of the realm of public international law is only starting. No, it should be noted that legal aspects of the case underlies a political interest for both nations. Accordingly, a series of judgments issued by the Permanent Court of International Justice led to the court acquiring jurisdiction in resolving the dispute of the parties. It should be noted that in the PCIJ in acquiring jurisdiction rests upon the consent of both Germany and Poland. So this concept is different from municipal law in yes, which sir. the law of the land is superior to everyone. No? The general ano, concept here is consent. So 
Bayerisch and Oberslisch are both German corp- corporations with business of producing chemicals including ammonium, nitrate, and lime. So, kabalo ba ni sir? Ammonium, nitrate, and lime, sir? <laughs> These are essential minerals, I think, sir. And ammonium, it's it can be expensive. Mm. And nitrate also, it's actually used in fertilizing, something like that. <laughs> mm. but, Ah, uh, you're correct, sir. Pero I've I've also the additional research in my ano uh, that nitrate, no? ammonium and nitrate combined will lead to ano production of dynamite. Yes. So sir. Mm, it will be used as a war weapon. Can be used as a war weapon. Can, can be used this, as a war weapon. Mm, these German corporations are substantially controlled by the German Reich in a series of instruments relating to intertransfer of company share. Therefore, it is vested with national interest of Germany. And this Bayerisch and Oberslisch are not just ordinary German corporations. They are state-controlled. So that's oh, why the... But the but the territory belongs to Poland. Ah, yes, sir. Yes. The territory belongs to Poland because uh, in the previous treaty, the factory is located in the ano, disputed Upper Silesia. No? That's the that's the part where Germany lost during the war, so yes, that's sir. why it, it was awarded to Poland. Okay, sir. Yes, Very sir. nice discussion. And yes, sir. Um, so we are here now. Na Germany raised after the court acquiring jurisdiction. No, uh, Germany submitted application to the court to for the issues to be resolved. No? Number one issue, I but number one submission of the court by Germany is by reason of Poland's attitude in respect to Bayerisch and Oberstich companies, which attitude declared by the court to be not in conformity with provisions of Article Six of the Geneva Convention, and consequently a claim for damages. Number two, the compensation be paid by the Polish government for the damage caused by the companies. Next, regarding the mode of payment. Number uh, number four, payment within one month of judgment for the possession of working capital thereof. Additionally, all claims subjects are, are subjected to 6% interest. And finally, another condition is ano, no nitrated lime and no nitrate ammonia should be exported to Germany, US, France, or Italy. So, as we, as we have seen, there are several submissions by the German government. So, as yes, sir. the case was uh, deliberated, we will see if these submissions were awarded or um, not awarded to them. Ah yes, sir. No? In this particular case, no, there are so many, ano, uh, disputes to be talk about, to be tackled. So, in the counter of the Poland government, to so the reply of Germany's application, number one, that the application be dismissed. So, if it is not dismissed, in alternative, the claim for indemnity should be provisional, provisionally suspended. In another case, in the event of the award, previous withdrawal by the said company before German, Polish, mixed tribunal and formal abandonment by it of any claim against the acts of Poland. When the civil tribunal of the Polish government had already rendered favorable decision in favor of Oberslisch. Oberslisch. No, I am, I, I, am I right, sir, in uh, no, pronunciation? Oberslisch? I have, I have uh, no background at all in uh, German words. <laughs> and I'm presuming that you have. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we presume oh, yeah. it's the, yeah. at least we, ca- we are reading it by English. But the, uh, as oh, you right. see, some letters in the German uh, dialect, they are, they are not read or something like that, sir. So anyway. <laughs> It's nice to hear that uh, you are reading those words near to, <laughs> probably near to its meaning. 
I, I hope so, sir. I hope so. <laughs> so, in any case, that the German government hand over the shares of Bayerisch and Oberstich. So, so, these are the uh, submissions counter for by, counter by the submission. Polish government. Yes, sir. So, we continue so, for the issues. For the issue, sir, uh, whether or not Germany is entitled to compensation of both companies in their private capacity as well as to the valuation of Poland with respect to the violation of the international agreement. It, it must be settled into fact that the German car corporations, Bayerisch and Oberschlich, are both private corporations. Private. No? It cannot bring a suit in international court or lay down a uh, agreement with the government of Poland. No? Okay. It will be uh, no, uh, over their jurisdiction. So number two, whether or not the value submitted adhered to to the court by the German application is meritorious. So in their application of the German of Germany, they have instituted a value of around uh, no, uh, monetary value for the amount of indemnity. Yes, sir. So. Num for so Number three, whether the application of stopping production of the enumerated products are valid. No? Can Germany stop uh, the Polish government from exporting the nitrate ammonia? No? Is it not uh, no, uh, inviolative of sovereignty of the Polish government? These are the uh, no? These are issues. At, mm, theoretical issues at that time. Number four, well, whether or not municipal tribunal of Poland supersedes the jurisdiction of the court in terms of pending cases therein. So, if you may recall, our reviewers, no, uh, we have discussed that the Polish government in their counter-reply uh, said that the decision of the German, uh, the German, uh, Polish German tribunal should be, uh, should be first granted before the this proceeding in court so number five whether or not the polish government is entitled to set off in the claim no? so for instance the the claim of the germany is granted can the polish government institute set off against other obligations perhaps those are the issues Perhaps um, the, the keywords there are like uh, if they are in consent. I, I think you said consent, sir. If, if uh, that is correct, sir. If a treaty exists, then if both parties consent to the treaty. <laughs> yes, sir. So we continue, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, for the, the resolution of the PCIJ. So, firstly, in justifying the PCIJ's jurisdiction, the interpretation of Article 36 of the Statute of the Court was cited as a basis to justify its jurisdiction. The article said that parties can go to the court in all or any of the class classes of legal dispute. So it says that PCIJ may have jurisdiction. If we go back, legal dispute concerning A, interpretation of a treaty, B, the existence of any fact which established would constitute a breach of an international obligation. Can you recall something? Or can, sir, can you recall a fact which pertains to letter B or from the previous facts? Yes, sir. No, uh, with the existence of any fact, if established, would constitute a breach of internal obligation. No? Uh, the fact, I think, is related to... to the jurisdiction of the court. No? Yes, sir. If I am... If I am yes, sir. 
I, I heard you. I, am, that. I, heard oh, you uh, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, uh, oh, na, there are so many issues kasi in this case. Na, no, uh, and it's our first uh, time to digest an international case, uh, uh, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. No? We are truly already practicing no? uh, <laughs> or in public international law. We are ano, international lawyers. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so let us see the nature the nature or extent of the reparation to be made for the breach of an international obligation. So this is not just a concern between private companies, rather this involves international obligation. Therefore, it brings the general concept of law that every violation of an engagement involves an obligation reparation. The forfeiture of the Polish government of the factories cannot be classified as a valid expropriation in the matter of asking compensation. It should be implied in the negotiations of the parties that the factory could no longer be restored in kind the court resolved to establish, to establish the question of the German government's own rights. It brought the suit not as a representative of the individuals who suffered injury, but on its own behalf. So a part of the um, issues are that were tackled earlier, sir, I think uh, is also discussed here that the, yes, sir. The suit does not only involve individuals, but Germany took on its behalf. So it is carrying the whole of a state or the whole German country in itself. So that's why. The, that's correct, sir. Seeing that the I know, uh, established that the German government are essentially the owners of that corporation. Yes. The owners, they are, they were mm. implying that the owners are members of the German Reich, which in that time was the national party or the ruling party of the German government. Ah, yes, sir. Something like that. So the court moved to consider the value of companies mm. worth to establish the compensation that is due for the violation of the convention. In terms of the value of compensation, the German application should consider the value of the company hypothetically in consideration of the circumstances in which it would continue to operate. In relation to the damage suffered, three fundamental questions arise. So the, the, there are three questions. The existence of the obligation to make reparation. The existence of the damage which must serve as a basis for the, for the calculation of the indemnity. And the extent of the damage. So basically, this is a concern of reparation, sir. How much to pay, what to pay, something like that. Ah, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> so, no, the two parties before this agreement cannot agree on the dispute so much more as the amount of the as, indemnity as, involved. As no? to how much are, and who should pay? <laughs> they, they are, they are in that time. No, there is not an established ano, accounting system yet that can generate the amount of the business or establish a, a monetary value for the corporations. Moreover, that they cannot be restored in kind. That they yes, are already uh, forfeited was, uh, by the Polish the, government. Yes, that the, that the factory cannot be restored in kind. Perhaps it was like uh, demolished or something. <laughs> mm. okay. Suppos supposedly, sir. Supposedly. So for the ruling in general, wherefore the court resolves in the vote of 9 to 3, grant judgment to the effect that the Polish government in respect to the two companies in attitude, in attitude declared by the court to not be in, court, in accordance with Article 6 of the Geneva Convention. Dismisses the pleas of the respondent government with respect to the exclusion and injunction of compensation due and the submission made by the same 
in the effect of the German government handing out the shares to the Polish government in relation to the municipal proceedings. Furthermore, the court dismisses the submission of the German government in terms of stopping the exports of nitrated lime and nitrate ammonia. So, as I see, sir, personally, the, the ruling mm -hmm. Polish government gained something, lost a lot, or German government gained something, but still uh, some of their submissions were not granted. Is it, is it not the ruling? Mm. Uh, you're precisely right, sir. No, uh, this is uh, no, uh, in contrast with what we have learned in, uh, no, uh, in the generic Philippine jurisdiction, no, in which one party is the winner and then the other party is a loser. No? In terms of public international law, where parties uh, no, designate to, through consent, no? the PCIJ is essentially uh, no, arbitrating the, uh, no, the dispute of the to two governments so yes, it favors one in in a specific issue and also negates the other in another specific okay. issue huh? so that's why uh, that's why that's that's my uh, opinion in this case that both germany have losses and gains for this case sir so any addition for, for before we <laughs> any uh, any additional comments uh, or opinions? Uh, I think the charge of factory case no uh, essentially gives uh, historical or precedent in terms of public international law. But it should be noted that that after the after the settlement of this issue after several years, World War II break, broke out. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> no? sir. Precisely. In which and Germany invaded its... The, the, the first country which Germany invaded is Poland. Poland, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, oh. World you War see, II no? broke uh, in Europe. Essentially, the PCAG in the, their, their duties are is to... In, or the League of Nations the precursor of the United Nations is to preserve peace. Yes. And one of their bodies is the PCIJ to administrate justice in behalf of the public international sphere had not done its duties. The, no? the League of Nations no? was short-lived. It was short-lived. Short -lived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No? Even if in this factor, factor Chorzo case, no? Polish government is ordered to pay but in the end, the yes. German government still invaded them. Yes. No? Somebody did not honor somebody. <laughs> okay, sir, that was a very nice and uh, 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 informative discussion. Yes, sir. It is my honor. So thank you for sharing with me uh, this uh, facts for the case. So with that, your final thank you also sir your final uh, message to our viewers no, to our viewers our classmates, uh, classmates. our professor <laughs> no i uh, i i hope that uh, our presentation are can give you some i know tidbits or information about the factory charge case and its relevance in in the present time no i hope that everyone appreciated na we have learned this case so so that we may apply it in the future not essentially in its technical ano, aspects but in its ano, uh, substantial ano, information yes sir how about you sir any final words sir almost the same as you sir that uh, learning this like what we can say classical example cases because I think this case has been a subject for uh, discussion among previous law students who are now uh, great lawyers. So we can certainly learn. We are still learning from uh, classic cases like this that we may be able to apply if uh, the time comes that we will be or we will be great no, I, to become lawyers. 
<laughs> no, but but I also hope that this kind of dispute will not happen again. No? Yes, that so, it may not happen <laughs> because there is no room <laughs> for World War Three. <laughs> Luckily, they are discussing. On, they were discussing only or disputing about ammonium and nitrate only. Yeah, but presently, <laughs> no. How about more for territory? Territory. Or, no. Or other yeah, significant resources. Of the arms. Now we are talking of nuclear, <laughs> something like that. So it's far more dangerous to have disputes like this. Yes, so, so, thank you very much, sir, Sir Fernando Cruz. For Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Neil Jan Baliar. No? So that's it. And see you. <laughs> see you uh, to our viewers. Uh, uh, I'm hoping that we will be having a reporting again so that we will be able to share more about ano, public international law. Okay, huh? sir. More reporting you want, it is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs>